Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sayar from Dentapass, your best online mentor for the preparation of INBD, ADAT and AFK exam. Today, I have taken a topic of biostatistics, which is very important to start with. It's measures of central tendency and variation. Let us dig more deeper and see what all important concepts are involved here. Let us see student how we can describe the data numerically. Uh, it is divided into the central tendency and the variation. So central tendency is further subdivided into the mean, median and the mode while variation is divided into the range, average deviation, variance, standard deviation and the coefficient of variation. Let us see the most common measures of central tendency. As I told you, it's a mean, median and the mode. So mean is a common arithmetic average when you add up all the values in the data or the observations divided by number of values. Then comes the median. Median is the midpoint of the values. For example, if you have seven values here, the middle one you are picking up and that will be the median. The mode is the one which is the maximum number of times. So if you can see in the picture, you can see the yellow circles are repeated the maximum number of times so it becomes a mode. Now in this case, you can see there are total nine circles here, four circles on this side, four circles on this side and the middle one is the yellow circle that becomes a median value. If we see what are the most common measures of central tendency and we were talking about the arithmetic mean. So what are the characteristics of the mean? Every data measured on an interval or ratio level has a mean and mean is sensitive of extreme values. Extreme value students is called as outliers. The sum of the deviations of the number in a data set from the mean will always be equal to zero. Now when we talk about the mean, as I told you, it is affected by outliers, which are the extreme values. In this case, you can see the mean of the values if it comes out to be 15 over 5, because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, when you add them up, it's coming to be 15. Divided by number of values, we have 5 of them. So 15 over 5 is 3. And here, in this case, mean is 4. How? Because you're adding up 1, 2, 3, and 4, and plus 10. It is 20 over 5 equals to 4. So that's what it means it is affected by the extreme value because extreme value in this case is 5 and 1 and in this case the extreme values is 1 and 10. That is the reason the mean here is changed. It has become 4 while the mean here is 3. Now let us talk about the mode. Mode student is a value that occurs most often and you have to remember that mode is not affected by outliers. If you remember we discussed that mean was affected by outliers. The mode can be used for either numerical or categorical data. Sometimes there may be no mode at all because all the data, all the numbers are repeated equal number of times or they are not repeated at all and there can be several modes too. So there can be two or three numbers which are repeated the same number of times. So if you look at the picture here, you can see the circle, one circle here, there is another circle at 3, there is another circle at 5 but we have three circles at number 9. 9 becomes the mode here because here the circles are repeated maximum number of times. But here you can see we have one circle each here. One circle on 0, 1 on 1, 1, 2, 3. But there is no circle that is repeated more than one number of time or more than once. So there is no mode here. We use the mean which is more commonly used for taking out the average unless the extreme values outliers are existing because once you have outliers mean value is going to get affected. So median is often used in that case because median is not sensitive to outliers. Now let us talk about the common measures of variation. Common measures of variation student is the range, average deviation, variance, standard deviation and coefficient of variation. Variation is actually giving us the information on how the data is spread out around the mean or the variability of the data values. If you look at the curve here, you can see there is a same center here, whether the curve is flatter or whether the curve is more peaked. Center is right here. That means this is a normal distribution. We will discuss about the normal distribution in the coming class. Let us discuss about the first measure of variation that is range. So range is easy to calculate students. Range is just a difference between the largest and the smallest observation. If you look at the picture here, we can see the different circles, the green circles. 1 is the smallest value here, right? And 14 is the largest value here. 14 minus 1, so it becomes 13. So 13 becomes the, so 13 becomes the range. Now, 
So if you look at this here, now we know, understand that range is 5 here, range is 5 here and is sensitive to outliers. Sensitive outlier means it is sensitive to the extreme values, right? Of course, because here the extreme value is 5 and 1 is the minimum value. So 4 is the range, but here we can see the extreme value or the maximum is 120 here and this is 1, so range becomes 119. So range is sensitive to outliers. Let us see how we calculate the average deviation or mean deviation based on the median. And actually not the mean, but the median is the appropriate measure of central tendency. We have to go for mean deviation. Mean deviation is how the values are scattered, how they are spread out around the median. When we talk about the average deviation, it is easy to calculate. For example, we have following values here, student. We have 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 10, 12, and 15. We can see the median of these values, it's going to be 8, right? Because the 8 is the middle number here. Now what you are going to do, you are going to subtract each of these values like 3, 4, 5, each of this from the median. Like 3 minus 8, 4 minus 8, 5 minus 8, up to 15 minus 8. And then you are going to add up those values and divide by number of values we have that is 9. Average deviation or mean deviation for these values is coming out to be 3.11. But if you look at set B, we can see that these are the values here in set B. We have 3, 7, 7, 7, 8, 8, 8, 9, 15. What will be the median here? If we calculate, so median is easy because it's again the odd number of values. We are putting four values on one side, four values on one side and the middle one we are picking up. That is going to be 8. Again, the same formula for calculating the average deviation. You are subtracting each of these numbers, each of these values from their median. 3 minus 8, 7 minus 8, 7 minus 8, 15 minus 8 finally. And then you are adding up all of these divided by 9. So it's coming out to be 1.78. You can see that both set A and set B, they have same median. That is 8, right? And the observation is also same, 9. But when we talk about their variations, their deviation or the average deviation, this is different in both of them. For set A, the average deviation is coming out to be 3.11 and for set B, it is coming out to be 1.78. Now, let us talk about variance. Variance, student, is how the values are spread out around the mean is the variance. For example, if we see the spread out of the values between 1 to 100, it will be greater than the values that are spread out between 1 to 10 because between 1 to 100, you will have more number of values. To calculate the variance, we have a little bit of calculation, but first of all, we understand that this is how the population variance is uh, calculated and the sample variance. So, n is the sample size here, while population size is the capital N in this case. Let us see how we use these formulas here. Mu is the mean of the population here and x is the mean of the data or the mean of the sample here. We will do an example of how to calculate the variance, but let us Firstly, see what is standard deviation. Standard deviation students is different from average deviation that we discussed before. Standard deviation is actually square root of the variance. And it is most commonly used measure of variation. Now you can have again, just like you have population variance and sample variance, same way you can have population standard deviation and sample standard deviation. To calculate the standard deviation, firstly we have to calculate the variance. Let us see how we calculate the variance. First of all, you are seeing they are following data here 10, 12, 14, 15, 17, 18, 16 and 24. There are even number of values here. 8 is the sample size here. Now if you calculate the mean of them, this coming out to be 16, right? So calculating mean is easy as we know. You add them up and divide by number of values 8. So it's coming out to be 16. Now what you do, the next step is, is to subtract each of these values from their mean right? That is 10 minus 16, 12 minus 16. So the x bar we have here is the mean. 10 minus 16, 12 minus 16, 14 minus 16, so forth, 24 minus 16. And then you are subtracting them from their data and then you are squaring them up. And then you add them. Look at this here. So 10 minus 16, square of it. 12 minus 16, square of it. Fourth, 24 minus 16, square of it divided by n minus 1. So n is your sample size. We know it is 8. 8 minus 1 is 7. It is coming out to be, when you add up the, these values uh, and uh, with their squares, you will see it is coming out to be 126 over 
7. It is coming out, the square root of it is 4.2426. This becomes the standard deviation. If you can look at it here, when we talk about the standard deviation, there are three data set, for example, data A, data B and data C. Here, they are saying the mean of all of these values here, right? It is the same 15.5, 15.5, 15.5. But the standard deviation is different in all the three data. Standard deviation is 3.338, data B it's 0.926 and data C it is 4.570. Why? Because mean can be the same, but how the values are spread out around the mean, that is your variance will be different. And if variance is different, standard deviation is the square root of variance. So that is also going to be different. If we see the coefficient of variation here, what is that? It measures the relative variation and coefficient of variation student is always in percentage. So it will show variation relative to mean and can be used to compare two or more sets of the data measured in different unit. If you see the coefficient of variation here, so that is sigma. Sigma is your variance of the sample divided by mu. Mu is the sample mean multiplied by 100% or CB equals to S. So capital S is actually the population variance here divided by X bar. That is the mean of the population divided multiplied by 100%. That is how we calculate the coefficient of variation.